This sermon is titled When God Became a Man. Be enriched as you listen. I want to speak to us this morning very briefly about God becoming a man. When God became a man. And that's what we are celebrating or remembering every Christmas. We're thinking about God who became man. Now I understand that, you know, we probably heard so many Christmas messages. We've heard it over and over again. But I want to just highlight the significance of this whole journey of God becoming a man. I want to break it down in seven steps and just try to highlight the significance of each of these steps that, that God took as He made this journey coming into our world. He's called Emmanuel, God with us. The first step when God decided to become a man was the miraculous conception. The miraculous conception. The prophet Isaiah spoke and he said, this is Isaiah 7 verse 14, Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a child, and you'll call his name Emmanuel. I want to emphasize, he said a virgin will conceive. A virgin. Now that had to be a miracle because in the natural, that was an impossibility. That could never have happened. And so the first step in God becoming a man was this miraculous conception somehow in the womb of this virgin. A baby was conceived. The angel Gabriel spoke to Mary and you know, when, Mary, when he brought the message to Mary that she was going to have a baby and she said, how can this be because I don't know a man? The angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will come upon you. And that holy thing which will be born of you will be called the Son of God. In other words, this child who was was going to be born in her womb was entirely the work of God without human agency. Other than the fact that Mary was a carrier. A human impossibility, but a miraculous conception. This child was human, but I had no earthly father. This child was born a man without the the involvement of a man. Why was this so important? We'll come to it. Second step, this whole process, was the divine incarnation. In other words, this baby was not just another baby that God gave a miraculous conception to. This was God becoming man. And John made it so clear. He said in John 1 verse 1, he said, In the beginning was the Word, The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word, verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, this one was the Creator coming into this world. This was divine incarnation. God becoming a man. Why is this so significant? The miraculous conception and the divine incarnation. Why is this so important? Why couldn't it have been just another baby born like everyone else? And then that one become a vehicle for the salvation of humanity. Why couldn't it have been that way? Why... Did there have to be this miraculous conception and divine incarnation? Why? Because everyone who was born of Adam was born in sin 
and was born subject to sin, Satan, and death. That was their default place and position. Everyone born of Adam was born subject to sin, Satan, and death. And therefore, no other human being, man or woman, was qualified to do anything to help the human race. They may have been great intellectuals. They may have been very holy. They may have lived very noble lives. They may have done great things, but that still could not qualify anyone who was born of Adam to redeem man from his fallen state. It just became absolutely necessary that there had to be somebody born as human, but above sin, above Satan, and someone who could conquer death. Only such a person could qualify to do anything to help you and me from our condition of being fallen, separated from God, and in sin. And the only way this could happen is if God became a man. That's the only way it could have happened. But think about this. That God, creator, would then clothe himself in human form and come into this world. Just think about that. The Bible tells us that man was created in the image, the likeness, the form, and the resemblance of God. And now in Christ, the Creator is taking on the form of the very created being, the being He created. The designer is coming in the form of something He designed. It's almost like saying the potter became one of his own vessels, the watchmaker became one of his own watches. A huge transition. But that's what God did when Christ was born. He clothed himself with humanity. But this was so necessary in order to provide salvation for you and me. That's why in the Bible, the Bible talks about the first Adam as the first Adam, and it refers to Jesus as the last Adam. Meaning this Adam the previous race ends, something new begins. The Bible refers to Adam as the first man. It refers to Jesus as the second man, implying that on the earth there are only two men. And it depends on, on from which man you descend. If you descend only from Adam, then you and I are bound to sin, Satan, and death. But if we receive our life from the second man, we overcome sin, Satan, and death. And that's why the second man came. Are you with me? And in this journey, as God became man, the third step is this humble habitation. When Almighty God came as man, He came in such a simple way. So simple that there was not even place for him at the inn. He had to be born in a cattle shed. None of us have had that experience. So humble, so lowly. He was born like that. When the God of this universe steps in, stepped into the world that he created with his own hands, he didn't come with great glory, pomp, and pageantry. He came in ordinary, something so simple. His vocation was that of a carpenter. Could have been anything. For 30 years, he walked this earth in such an ordinary way. But the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who though being in the form of God, he didn't count it robbery to be held equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and, and humbled himself and became a bond servant and became obedient to the point of death. 
In other words, it's saying this one was God, but he chose to humble himself. He chose to make himself of no reputation, and he chose to become a servant, a born servant. So as he walked as a man, he walked in complete obedience to the Father, though he was co-equal with the Father. He walked in his humanity, complete, in complete submission to the Father. And that's why we call him the Son of God. As a son, obedient to the Father, he walked in full submission to the Father. Are you with me? His humble habitation. But yet, in his humanity, the Bible says, look at him, because he is the perfect representation of God. The Bible says he is the image of of the invisible God. The glory of God is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. So in his humble habitation, in his humanity, we see the glory of the deity. If you and I ever want to know who God is like, what is he like, what is his nature, what are his works, what, what are his words, look at Jesus. Every word he spoke are the words of God. Every deed he did are the works of God. And in that simple, humble estate, He revealed God to us. The Bible says He came to do the will of the Father. But then think about this. His life modeled the life that you and I can live, or you and I were intended to live, if we lived in submission to the Father and above sin, Satan. Sin and Satan. This is the life of a son of God, of a daughter of God. This is the kind of life you and I could live. And that's why we are imitators of Christ. Are you listening? That humble habitation is a prototype. It's a model for you and me to follow. But also, think about this. That in that humanity, when he spoke, people said, What man is this? From whence had he this wisdom? We never heard a man speak like this because this man speaks with authority. And Jesus said, The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus was moved with compassion. He sat with sinners. His stories captured the heart of the common man. His parables opened their minds. And yet he confounded the learned, the scholarly of his day with his understanding of the scriptures. And he did mighty works. He healed the sick. He drove out demons. He worked miracles. He met the needs of the people. He calmed the wind, the storms, and the waves. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Meaning, the Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of today. And that's how I want to invite you and me to believe, not in a modern day Jesus, not in a contemporized version of Jesus, but believe in the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus of the Gospels. Because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And in this humble habitation, the Lord Jesus never did anything that could establish a name and a fame for Himself. He never organized religion. He never incorporated an organization. He never got himself on Facebook and Twitter. He never set up, you know, wrote books and none of that. He had 12 ordinary people whom he trained for three years. It's been 2,000 years since he walked on this earth. Anyone else, their name would have disappeared into oblivion. But here we are 2,000 years and that name of that humble Nazarene is the greatest name in all the earth. 
In his name, there are more songs written, more institutions established, more books published, more work done, more people devoting themselves to the sake of that one cause established by the name of Jesus Christ. People have tried to raise his name from history, but unfortunately, but whether you like it or not, all of history stands divided around his life, death, and resurrection. It's almost like saying, you cannot have the human race without Jesus Christ. And he lived, he lived in such a humble way. And he left an indelible stamp on human life. The fourth step in this amazing journey when God became a man was sinless perfection. Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews says this, that he was tempted in all points like as we are, but he was without sin. So Jesus faced sin. He faced every manner of temptation and yet he was without sin. And why is this important? Because if there was ever to be somebody who could save you and me, it had to be a man who was living above sin, above Satan, and who would conquer death. And so his life of sinless perfection qualified him to be the perfect substitute. There has never been another person on earth who lived such a sinless life, who lived a sinless life. No one else could qualify. And so here was Jesus, fully qualified. Through his miraculous conception, through the divine incarnation, through his humble habitation, and through his sinless perfection, he alone, this one man, qualified to represent you and me to take upon himself the sins of the whole world. And that brings us to the next step in this journey, his redeeming sacrifice or his full redemption that he provided for you and me. When Jesus died on the cross, it was not an accident. It was an event that was planned before the foundation of the world. And on that cross he did, which no other person has ever done. The Bible says the sins of the whole world were placed upon him. And he qualified. He alone was qualified to do that. And it was not the physical suffering, not just the physical suffering. Words cannot describe because our mind can never comprehend what took place, fully comprehend what took place on the cross. When all your sins, all my sins were put upon Jesus Christ and he became the redeeming sacrifice for you and me. How do we understand it other than simply belief? How can we describe, how can we explain What songs can we write to capture what took place on the cross? When all our sins were placed, when the sins of the whole world were placed upon Jesus. And John writes in 1 John 2, 2, he became the payment for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Your sins have been, has been paid for through this one life the life of Jesus Christ a full redemption the the cross is not a place of defeat the cross is the place of the greatest triumph ever known to man because on the cross sin was defeated on the cross Satan was defeated that enemy of our souls, that one who would bind us and hold us enslaved and 
torment us and oppress us. The oppressor of our souls was defeated on the cross. What you and I could not do for ourselves, what no other man could do for ourselves, this Son of God did for us on the cross. Amen. A full redemption. But it doesn't stop there. The next two steps in this journey are the glorious resurrection and the glorious exaltation, the great and grand exaltation. Peter writes about this in 1 Peter 3. He says that Christ suffered for our sins once the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God having put to death in the flesh but raised alive by the spirit and then he says in verse 22 that he has gone into the heavens and is seated at the right hand of the father with angels and authorities being made subject to him oh a glorious resurrection and a grand exaltation. The Bible says that when Jesus rose up from the dead, he conquered, the, conquered hell and the grave. He said, I have the keys of hell and the grave. He conquered the last enemy of our soul, death. And he is exalted. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says, God has highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that He is Lord. This is the Jesus whom we believe. And because He lives, the Bible says, we also will live. When God became a man, the journey began right at the place where you and I were. In our place of deepest sin, in our place of deepest darkness, in our place of depravity, God began His journey there. And that journey led Him through Via Dolorosa, the way of the cross. He went up to Mount Golgotha, where sin and Satan were conquered. And that journey led Him through the empty tomb where when he rose up, hell, grave, and the death were conquered. And that journey led him to the top of Mount Olives when he ascended and he said, because I live, you also will live. And his journey took him all the way to the open arms of the Father where the Father is waiting for you and me saying, come home. The way has been opened. The gates are open. He has made the way. Amen. And He made this journey for one reason. For our salvation. For our salvation. For our salvation. Why did God become a man? So that you and I could be saved from our sin from Satan, from the oppression of the enemy, that we could come out of darkness into his marvelous light, that we could come out of everything Adam put us under and we could live victorious and over sin, Satan and death. That's why he made this journey. And the Bible says in Adam we die, but in Christ we live. In Adam we are condemned, but in Christ we are made righteous. In Adam we are put un uh, under, but in Christ we rule and reign in life. That's the journey we are celebrating. The journey that Jesus Christ made for you and for me. Amen. For our salvation. The Apostle Paul penned these words. He said, this is a true saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. If you think you've sinned badly, you've messed up badly, 
Paul said he did first. And he said, but Jesus came for us sinners. What a great redemption. Worship team, please come. What a great redemption. What a great salvation. The beautiful thing is this. From start to finish, this was entirely the work of God. You and I had nothing to contribute other than all He asks from you and me today is come and believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. A free gift of salvation is what God offers you and me. Amen. What an amazing work that He has done for us. And in this salvation, there is forgiveness for our sins. There's healing for our minds and our bodies. There is restoration of our lives. We become brand new people and we are brought into the kingdom of God and we are made sons and daughters of God. And God is offering this to you and me freely by His grace because He did the work start to finish. All He's asking you and me to do is to believe. Come and believe. Amen. So I'm going to give that invitation to us. I know many of us here personally, we have already believed in Jesus. But if there's anyone here that, you know, maybe you've, a friend invited you, maybe you just happened to come in today, maybe you're watching online, but you've never understood what Christmas is all about. Why did God come into this world? Why are these Christians saying, you know, God came, God is with us. What does it mean? We've tried to explain in a simple way. What is this all, what this is all about? And if you feel moved in your heart to say, I want to believe in Jesus Christ. I want the gift that He offers, the, the forgiveness for my sins and for me being brought into the family of God to be a child of God to be a son or daughter of God. I want to give you that invitation, that opportunity for you to express your decision that you will believe, that you are going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer shortly and that will be your opportunity to make that decision. There is no compulsion. We are adults. You can think and reason for yourself. And if you believe in this message of Jesus Christ, you can make the choice and nobody can dictate it for you. Nobody can stop you from making the choice and nobody can force you to make the choice. It's entirely your decision. But as an adult, having understood the message of Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to make that choice, to believe in this one and to say, I want my origin, not just being Adam, but to be in Christ. I want my life to come forth from Jesus Christ and He makes us brand new. He forgives us our sins and He leads us in the path that He has for our lives. We're also going to pray and ask the Lord to receive the full blessing of His provision of salvation. Like I said, it's healing for our minds and our bodies, freedom from sin, from bondage. Some of you might be sitting here in bound to addictions, enslaved to things that you want to be free from. And in a simple moment of prayer, the same Jesus who set people free in the Bible can do that for you and me today. It's all in His name. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. It's in His name. So I want to encourage you to call on that name. He is as close as a mention of His name. So when you call on that name and say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, set me free. Jesus, I want to be free from this addiction. I want to be free from this oppression. I want to be free from this bondage. He is there, right there to do it for you. Amen. The worship team is going to lead us in a song. We're going to sing together. After that, I'm going to come. I'm going to lead us first in a prayer for people to believe in Jesus Christ and then I'm going to pray with us together 
to receive his touch on our lives. The same Jesus of the Bible is here today. Amen? Let's rise to our feet if you can, please. And just worship him. The worship team will lead us. Just, just thank him for what he did for you and me on the cross. Thank you. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Is anyone here this morning, those watching online, if you've never received Jesus into your life, the Bible tells us to everyone who received him, received Jesus, who believed in his name, to them he gives the power to become the children of God. What an awesome blessing receive Jesus Christ and he gives us the power to become God's children if you've never done that want us want to lead us in a simple prayer and you can do this right now nobody's forcing you but if you feel prompted in your heart to do it just join me in this prayer you've never done this before 
to say this with me if you'd like to. Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sins on the cross. You were buried and you rose up again. You're alive today. Come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me follow you. And you alone. The rest of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody here, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. We want to celebrate with you. The Bible says that it's great rejoicing in heaven. Even over one person who makes that decision to turn to God. If you pray that prayer with me this morning, I want to see your hand. Anybody here, you prayed this prayer with me for the first time. I want to see your hand. Just wave your hand at me, please. Anybody here? I see one hand there. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? You prayed this prayer with me this morning for the very first time. Just wave your hand. God bless you. Our greeters will come to you and give you a bag. We call it a New Believers bag. There are some free resources uh, that you can that we want to give to you. There's also a card that says decision card. If you just write your name and number there and give it back to them, then they will come and uh, they will receive it from you and somebody from the church office will call you and give you guidance on how to use that. Anybody else? Just want to make sure everybody's got it. Just raise your hand if you haven't received the bag yet. Okay. All right. So we're going to just pray before we dismiss and we'll give you instructions what we're going to do for lunch in a little bit. But we're going to pray right now. And in His name, in His name, there are miracles. In His name, there is healing. In His name, there is freedom. Everything we need is in that name. I'm going to pray from here very simply, and I want you to pray. And if you've come in here with a need, your mind, your body, habits, addictions, other situations in life where you need God's intervention, I want you to just say a simple prayer. You can pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. And I'll just pray from here and we'll agree that the Lord Jesus, as you call on His name, because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, He will be your miracle worker. He will be your deliverer. He will be the one who answers your prayer. So take a moment, just pray in His name. And Lord, even in this place, as people call upon the name of Jesus, Lord, in that name, let sickness, disease be healed. Let healing words of flow. In that name, let minds and emotions be healed. Let anxieties and fears and torments and oppressions lift in the name of Jesus. In that name, in the name of Jesus, let bondages and addictions be broken. Let people walk out free, different from the way they came. Satan, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus and declare your works broken. Declare your works defeated and destroyed because Jesus Christ did that on the cross. And we enforce that victory. We enforce that work in each one's life. And Lord, release miracles. Miracles of provision. Miracles of open doors. Miracles of divine intervention, God. And for Lord, for people who need wisdom to know what decision to make, which way to go, which step to take, in the name of Jesus, make it clear to them guide them. Father, we thank you for your mighty works. Thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You know, what we'd love for you to do is to share your testimony. Take a moment to send an email to testimony at apcw.org and you receive a miracle. To share your testimony. We'll be happy to share it back 
with, uh, with the congregation. And, you know, of course, we keep everything anonymous. We don't mention your names, but we'll share the testimony. In a few minutes, we're going to dismiss. And uh, like we said, everybody's invited for lunch. There are four counters outside. There will be four canopies. So the can- under the canopies is where the food is being served. And there are four, two right behind or outside and two on the side towards my right. So you can go to any of these four counters, get your lunch, and you can sit anywhere. You can come back inside, you can sit outside, just just spend time with people, enjoy yourself, and then head home. Is that okay? Right? So we're going to dismiss. I'll just speak the benediction. Our pastors, life group leaders will be here to pray with you personally if you need prayer. Others, you're you're free to go out and have lunch and just just enjoy yourself right let's let's close father we thank you for this day and may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our heavenly father and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit be with each of us always in jesus name amen amen thank you for listening we trust this message was a blessing to you For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.